Hello viewers, you're watching Crass Moto Channel. In this short segment, I want to tell you about the Italian motorcycle Shifty 900 with an engine from a Fiat 127. European designers tried installing a car engine in a motorcycle chassis to provide a European alternative to Japanese superbikes. What came out of this? What was the Shifty 900 like? And why most likely you haven't heard about this motorcycle until now? You'll find out everything now. Enjoy watching. The 70s were a real nightmare for the European motorcycle industry, and some brands couldn't survive this tough period. Japanese motorcycles were blamed for seriously pushing Europeans out of their own market. Two-wheeled machines from the land of the rising sun were powerful, reliable, and inexpensive. In 1969, Honda presented the CB750 Superbike to the public, and in 1976, Suzuki was the last among Japanese motorcycle manufacturers to introduce their own large inline four-cylinder four-stroke model, the GS750. British, French, German, and Italian motorcycle manufacturers, complacent in their success, were unprepared for this turn of events. Some companies and brands simply disappeared, as happened with the British Birmingham Small Arms and Norton. Others clung to their identity like the Germans from BMW, and others survived as best they could thanks to government and public support, producing various sports motorcycles, as was the case with the Italians. It was clear that competing face-to-face -face with Honda and its compatriots was almost impossible, since the pace of engine development in Japan at that time was tremendous. But the thing is, buyers wanted four-cylinder motorcycles. So some engineers came up with the idea of using an engine of this configuration from a small car, which were plentiful in Europe. Moreover, this idea even promised some benefits. There was no need to spend time and resources developing an engine from scratch. And in the case of maintenance and repair, the mechanic at the service station would be working with a unit he was already familiar with, and spare parts for it could be found at the shop across the street. In general, the idea seemed quite viable. Guided by this idea, a number of motorcycles with car engines were built in France. These were the MF650, the BFG1300, and the Bacardo Aero. There are episodes about the last two on the channel. There was a similar attempt in Britain as well. However, the Shifty 900 we're looking at now comes from Italy. This motorcycle was designed and built by the Italian engineer Ugo Lina Grandis after returning from South Africa where he worked at Chrysler. It took Grandis about three years to create the first working prototype, which was completed in 1977. Ugo leveraged the Fiat 127's popularity and rising demand for large motorcycles by selling his engineless motorcycle at a much lower price than any competitor. The task of finding a Fiat engine and installing it into the motorcycle chassis was left to the lucky owner of the machine. Ugo's idea made sense. At that time, only a few in Italy could afford a large Japanese motorcycle. And taking advantage of the mechanical simplicity of the Fiat 127, Grandis created a manual that allowed the engine to be transplanted from the car to the motorcycle with relative ease. In Busati Vaganza near Padua, he started small-scale motorcycle production of his own design. And to begin with, it was necessary to release a fully finished batch of equipment so that it would appear in journalist reviews and at various events in front of the general public. The first finished motorcycles left the factory gates in 77. The equipment was named Shifty. 
In English, to shift means to change or move. This name was meant to refer to the fact that moving the engine from a Fiat car into a motorcycle frame is quite a simple task. The engine from the 127 was installed in a tubular steel duplex frame, which was specially designed for this engine. The Fiat power unit was a liquid-cooled inline four-cylinder, four-stroke engine with a 903cc displacement. This engine produced a maximum power of 45 horsepower at 5,500 revolutions per minute and 64 newton meters of torque at 3,000 revolutions per minute. The transmission was also from Fiat and had four gears. It underwent minimal modifications for use on the motorcycle. A sprocket on one differential output drove an intermediate shaft with a chain, which then transmitted force to the rear wheel by another chain. The fuel tank was under the seat and held 21 liters of gasoline. The electrics and air filter were hidden under the dummy tank cover, which also housed the Fiat 127 instrument panel. The rear wheel suspension and the front fork were taken from the Laverda Superfreni 750. The mufflers were from the Moto Guzzi 1000 Sport, and the seats were from the Benelli 906. During production, the shifty 900 motorcycle's appearance varied slightly based on available parts from third-party suppliers. It was a large touring motorcycle. When dry, the shifty weighed 269 kilograms. However, this did not prevent it from reaching a top speed of around 170 kilometers per hour and consuming about 5 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers traveled. It's quite logical that the Shifty 900 suffered from all the problems inherent to its design. It was heavy, bulky, very wide at the hips, and did not have much power. However, the motorcycle handled and moved confidently. Those who rode it noted the great flexibility of the engine. The machine could start moving practically in any gear. The motorcycle was produced through 1982. Despite the fact that Shifty 900 made quite a lot of noise in the media, it did not receive widespread public recognition. Only about 70 units of this machine were built in total. The company of Ugo Grandis went bankrupt in 82, and Ugo himself died in 98 at the age of only 56. This is the story of the Shifty 900 motorcycle, the story of one of the attempts to install a car engine in a motorcycle frame. Today, the Shifty 900 is a collector's item. At this point, my story comes to an end. As always, this was Krasmoto Channel with you. Don't forget to stay active on the channel by leaving comments, sharing, and subscribing. Special thanks to everyone who supports my channel, financially using the details pinned in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.